let's talk about Adam and Eve. Um, in your professional scientific opinion, do you believe that a literal Adam and Eve are possible and that we actually uh, descended from them? Um, what I think is that if Adam and Eve are real people in a real past, our best scientific ed, uh, um, you know, estimates tell us that they would be uh, ancestors of all of us. That's what I think. Hmm. Um, is that a literal Adam and Eve? Well, it really gets down to a lot of details about how you read scripture, but um, but they could be as recent as just 6,000 years ago in a divinely created garden, created out of the dust and out of a rib, hmm. you know, without parents. It gets to be pretty a pretty literal reading, or it could be much more ancient, like maybe 750,000 years ago, like, uh, you know, Bill, Bill explains. The only way that really what we're finding in nature seems to press on how some people think about Adam and Eve is that it suggests that there were people outside the garden mm. that their lineage eventually interbred with. Now, if you could push them really, really far back, uh, like to 750,000 years ago, it's possible that uh, maybe there wasn't any interbreeding uh, between their lineage and others. But both the Genesis scripture uh, tradition and scripture itself is, is, is vague about that. It doesn't really rule that out. So we're not really facing a fundamental challenge to the faith anymore, Like maybe like we thought. It turns out that even if you read Genesis really, really literally, maybe even more literal than some people think is plausible, it's not in conflict with the scientific evidence. Okay, I've heard that there's evidence that there's Neanderthal DNA within the human genome. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, that's what it really looks like. And so that would have meant some kind of interbreeding with them in the past? Well, um, it all depends what we mean by human. So okay. if Adam and Eve was recent as 6,000 years ago, there's no Neanderthals around. And so, uh, but there's also Homo sapiens that lived beforehand. So there was that, what we're talking about is really, um, you know, Homo sapiens interbreeding with Neanderthals in the distant past long before Adam and Eve enter the scene. Because mm, we have that kind of very strange story in Genesis 6 of the sons of God with the daughters of men and producing Nephilim. Yeah. Do, do you have anything to say on that? Well, I mean, I'm not sure if we want to understand that as Neanderthals, but I mm. think if you read carefully Genesis, it, it would be hard to come away without understanding. I think you have to do a lot of backflips, frankly, to mm. think that it isn't teaching that Adam and, Adam and Eve's lineage isn't pure. So while I may not be talking specifically about Neanderthals, I don't think with the story of the Nephilim, it is teaching, well, that Adam's, Adam and Eve's lineage didn't really remain pure. Mm. And I think that that, or just confined to itself. And I think that's been a part of the Genesis tradition for a very long time. So the idea that it was Adam and Eve's lineage hermetically sealed with no input from anyone else, that's, uh, that's more a straw man of the tradition. It's a sim oversimplification or cartoonification of it. Okay. That isn't really where what, what it teaches. The fact of the matter is that the story of Genesis 2 and 3 is a very focused story in, in, in a local area. It talks about the, border, the borders of the garden and what happens with Adam and Eve. And then they're kicked out of the garden and they're exiled. They're put outside the borders and there's even like an angel that comes down that has to, that they could have gone back if it wasn't for the angel, right? Yeah. And uh, there's a great deal of details in there that really suggests that they encountered people outside. And so uh, this is not something I invented, by the way. This is something people, and by the way, this also wasn't, didn't, people didn't come up with this because of evolution. People have been wondering about this for a very long time, <laughs> thousands of years. And it really came to a head, not with the evolution, but with the discovery of the new world and realizing that there were antipodians on the world, people who lived on the other opposite side, the antipode of the earth, um, with the discovery of the new world about 500 years ago, that really had people really having to kind of sort through and wonder about uh, those people outside the garden and who were they and how are they connected to us okay. and so what's really happening here is a recovery of the genesis tradition well we're not accepting the cartoon uh you know sunday school sunday school uh, version that yeah. younger yeah. creation has taught me uh, but instead looking at what scripture actually teaches and how the church has interpreted it over the last several thousand years and it has always been a question mark about what's going on outside the garden mm. and if we keep that in mind then we don't have to care about genetic bottlenecks we don't have to worry about all this nonsense that have really crept in. And we just care about something called genealogical descent. Do we all have, do we all descend from Adam and Eve? And, you know, probably others alongside them, but do we all descend from them? And it turns out, like I said, when you care about it from that point of view, um, Adam and Eve, even if they were very, very recent, even as just 6,000 years ago, everyone by 81 would be, you know, ancestors of them. They would be ancestors of everyone. Um, 
Eve would be the mother of all the living. She would have become mother of all the living. And, uh, you know, Adam would be our first father in that sense. And then that, and that could have been how God instituted, you know, sacred humanity or a, a covenantal humanity that, uh, that he had wanted to be in relationship with. We fell out of it. And then he sends Jesus to bring us back into relationship with him.